Okay, Job chapter 3. There's been silence of the five men for seven days and seven nights. Now we know of four, Job and his three friends, and later on we'll find a fourth one if he's there already, or maybe he shows up later. But seven days and seven nights the Bible records silence. Agony of the boils, the loss of everything, and you don't have to say nothing to be irritated. Just looking at the looks of the people. I mean, maybe they're looking at the sundials and didn't have watches. But Job, after seven days and seven nights, after this, opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. That's birthday. You find two occasions in the Bible birthday in Genesis, a man is hung. You find a, a place in the Gospels of a birthday and a man is beheaded. Job speaks about curses his day he's been born through this chapter. <coughs> Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 14 curses his birthday too. And then Christians go and celebrate birthdays. Bible doesn't say anything about birthdays as far as being good. And of all the birthdays and birthdays that should be recognized, you would think that the birthday of Jesus, and nowhere is it actually recorded by date. And if you study the scriptures, you can maybe point to a date, but you can't be fully assured. Now you would think if birthdays are important, again, the birthday of Jesus Christ. We know the birthday of Buddha. We know the birthdays of the other gods. And yet the God above all, the God, the King of the Kings, the Lord of Lords, we don't know his birthday. Two great men of the Bible, Job and, and uh, Jeremiah, cursed their birthday. Let the day perish, his birthday, wherein I was born. And the night which it was said, there's a man-child conceived. You know the good news. Your wife just gave birth. It's a baby boy. Remember, they didn't have ultrasounds or anything like back then. Let the day be darkness. No light. And Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Let not God regard it from above heaven. Neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. He wants death. Let a cloud dwell upon it. And that cloud has a reference in the Bible to the second advent where there will be darkness and no sun and no moon and stars. Let the blackness, that's the first time that word shows up, blackness of the day terrify it. I mean, does, does, do you see Job wearing a party hat and blowing wind and air horns and blowing out a cake? We don't know how old he is. I don't think we've seen a date of him yet. But, I mean, he's got children, he's married, he's got all this substance, and he's not celebrating his birthday. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of months. There's your birthday. Month, days, and years. And Job says, don't regard it. I was born September 6, 1968. Job says, don't regard it. How come no Christian Bible church says, let's celebrate the day of your new birth? You ever ask yourself that question? Now, some people don't know and understand, and you're not not saved because you don't remember your date. You could have been young. You could have been, you know, just, I had to use the date of my baptism certificate to find my day. But no one celebrates the day that they were newborn and that their name was put in the Lamb's Book of Life. Would that not be a great celebration? And when a man is born, he's either going to go to heaven or he's going to hell. And the celebration of the new birth would be you're going to heaven. But I have not ever been in a church where they celebrate the second birth. 
months. Keep on going with Job. So you want <coughs> you want the birth, month, day, and <coughs> year. Excuse me, allergies. Job chapter 3, verse 6. Lo, let that night be solitary. So evidently Job was born at night. Let no joyful voice come therein. It's born. It's a boy. Let them curse it that curse the day. Who are ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight therefore be dark. Don't see ever the, the stars. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day. Now my wife went the other day, and we gone a few times, but we went the other day, we went to, to the beach and we watched the sunrise in the east. And it's a beautiful thing. It's always a cloudy day. But we get to see the sun come up, and Job said, I don't want to see that. I'm tired of it. I wish I'd never seen a sunrise. The guy's bitter. The guy's angry. He, he's sore. He's got, he's got these boils all over him. He's pussy. He's gooey. He's yucky. And you can't blame him. But still, he does not blame God, and he does not sin with his lips, the Bible says. He just wish he was never in this predicament. And this can't be the first time that Job's been, been in trouble and problems. Because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb. Nor sorrow from my eyes. He said sorrow. All the sorrows I've gone through. If I would have died in her womb, I would not have to face any of them. Or maybe he's talking about the sorrows of chapter 1 and chapter 2. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? I got one good answer for you, Joe. Because we would not be reading 42 chapters of suffering. We would not have your book to study to realize that behind the scenes is God and the devil working. We don't picture what God does in our lives to help us get right. We don't read the account of Job if you were never born how to be right. And he'll say, Lord, oh, if my words were printed in a book, oh, they'd be graven with an iron pen. And thank God we have it. But Job, if you were never born... And no Christian that loves the Lord and does right says, Oh, I wish I was never been born. Are you passing out gospel tracts? Someone may have got saved because of that. If you were never born. Trials and sufferings. You are being an example to somebody else somewhere. And if you go through, listen, don't get upset, you get upset like Job. That's natural. And anybody comes in your face, oh, you ought not be be acting like that. Just brush them off, kick them. Because they probably not suffer as much as you suffer. They don't know any better. Like Job's three friends are going to speak. Why did I not give up the ghost death when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Now that's the way the women would give birth. They would get on their knees and. That was also in, in Exodus chapter 1 and I believe chapter 2, how they were given birth. Why did a breast that I should suck? Life, milk, nourishment. <coughs> Forgive me for coughing. For now should I have lain still, death, and be quiet, death. I should have slept, death. Then I been at rest in the grave. They were taking the baby. It was so born. He's still buried. My brother was born October 13th. Died the same day. He used to do the burial. I would assume. I'm being an assumption here. But you know. some I guess. Babies who die in the womb. There's still a body there to bury. With kings and counselors of the earth. Which build desolate places for themselves. 
or the princes that have gold who fill their houses with silver. And you get this a little bitter looking around. You know, they're alive. They're well. They got no problems. Yeah, they do. Or as in hidden untimely birth, I had not been deaf. As infants, that's the first time that word shows up, infants, which never saw light. And there's a whole mass of them in this day and era by, uh, by abortion. There the wicked cease from troubling the death, the grave. The, 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 the wicked can't bother those inf infants. You can't torment them. They're dead. And there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together the grave. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. That's the first time that word shows up. And the oppressor that Job doesn't know, and I don't know if he ever knows, is the devil, Satan, that we read in chapter 1 and 2. That's the oppressor. I don't rightly know who he's blaming right now, but there's somebody he's blaming. And, you know, these rich people and all that, they give us problems. And, you know, the, the princes, the government gives us problems. Why only die? I don't know if he fully, he, well, he doesn't understand. The small and great are there, the great. And the servant is free from his master. If an employee or a servant of a guy, if he dies, oh, well, there's no under servitude. When you die, you die. And Job is telling us there is no reincarnation. You don't come back. As far as what Job knows, the first book, he doesn't have really any revelation of heaven or anything like that. And so, to him, like the book of Ecclesiastes, death is just the grave. Because there is no revelation of God to them. And as far as the body, yes, that body dies and it goes off into a hole in the ground. And it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't witness. It doesn't get in arguments. It doesn't fight. It doesn't get abused. It doesn't have envy. And it causes no trouble and no problem. And it doesn't do nothing at all for the Lord. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery? That light would be John 1, the light of Jesus Christ. That's the best light to get when you're in misery. But he's talking about light as life. And again, that's John chapter 1. John chapter 1 says he is the light and that light is light. Capital L. So you find a scripture reference here in Job chapter 3 verse 20 to John chapter 1. You find Jesus Christ. When he's talking about the death, there's Jesus. Well, what's the best way to die? In Christ, the light and life. And life unto the bitter in soul. He's bit, He wants to die. That's what he wants to do. And he's angry. He's still living. He, and remember, he's taking that that pot, that, that broken pot, and he's scraping himself while he's talking. That stuff I know just by one at a time, three different times. My, it's itchy. It burns, and it just and the, the infection it has makes you feel tired. Makes you feel grumpy. You don't feel well. And that was just one boil. And I've had three different times of one boil. I did not have boils over my whole body. I didn't have it on my lips. I didn't have it on my eyes. I didn't have it in my ears. I didn't have it in privates. I didn't have it in the most sensible places. Underneath the armpits. Behind your knee. The Bible says from the, from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. If he moved his elbow, there were boils there. And they probably popped. If he moved his leg, there's boils there on the knee and behind the knee. They probably popped. They probably ached. They probably sore. The devil got him. And there are people who are suffering. Yeah, they're going to say things. You just sit there and listen. And for... I'm just, 
For the blessedness of the Lord God, if you have not suffered like that person, do not open your big fat mouth and say, I know what you're going through. Smack you in the face and lock your lips forever. Don't you ever say that. Because you don't know what they're going through. Now, if you've gone through that, then yeah, you could be a comfort. When you're not in misery and you have not have any problems, and a man like Job is speaking up and shooting his mouth off, let him. I mean, where have you seen the debt? Where have you seen sin? He's not cursing. I, I mean, cursing anybody else. He's not sinning. He says, oh, I, if I were dead, this would not have happened. True. Job will come to his senses, yeah, I did not die. I'm going to have to move on. What Job says in chapter 3 is absolutely true. But think about all the blessings he'd miss if he would have been dead. And there had to have been some love with his wife because he produced, I think it was 10 children. He went to God and said, God, if my children, each of them, if they sin against you, I'm going to offer a sin offering to you and a peace offering. He had to love those children. And if he had died in childbirth, he would have never had those children. But, you know, he's got suffering. He's got problems. Let him get it out. And sometimes the best thing to do is let him talk. Makes him feel good. People pay psychiatrists, I don't know how much money they pay them, to talk. A psychiatrist will just hear you talk. We ought to be go to Christians. We ought to say, listen, you know, I'm just having a hard time. Just hear me out, please. Wherefore is life given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter uh, and soul. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, the light and life. Which long for death, but it cometh not. And dig for it more than for his treasure. There are people out there who are just looking to die, looking to die. You not know that that is a tribulation passage there. There are people in the tribulation who are going to be bit by these scorpion kind of horse kind of weird thing. And the Bible says they're going to be tormented for a period of months. They're going to seek death, and it's not going to happen. Remember, when we're in the book of Job, again, we're looking into the tribulation period. Imagine a guy, and I always use this illustration, imagine a guy who's been bit by one of them scorpion tail, absolute agony. I say he goes all the way up to the top floor of the Empire State Building, and he throws himself off and lands on the streets of New York City, gets hit by a bus, and he gets up in worse pain. He did not die. The Bible says they're going to look for death, and it ain't going to happen. That's what Job is. Job is a picture of Israel sitting on the ground in the ashes, being plagued by the devil in misery. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. Which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can find the grave. Well, for a Christian, yes. Yeah. For an Old Testament saint that's done right. You know, if Job had died at that point and gone off to Abraham's bosom, he would be in peace. He would be sleeping, the Bible says. And then when the Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died on that cross and went down into hell and came out of hell, and what he said to that dying thief, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And he picked up the Old Testament saints. One of them probably would have been Job. At that moment, he'd be, glory, hallelujah, he's coming, here he is, here he comes, I see him. Like us, absent from the body and just great joy when we're present with the Lord. Imagine how happy we'll be when we actually see the Lord. Whether it be death, to be absent from the body, present with the Lord, or that day, the moment when we see the Lord in the air at the rapture. Why is light given to a man whose ways are hit, is it? All right, oh, wait a minute. In whom God has hedged, that's the first time that word shows up. But in not John, in John, is that not in Job chapter 1 and 2 that the devil told God, you have a hedge about him? You protected him? And then God re removed a little bit, if not that hedge, allowed Satan to go inside. 
So Job here is now speaking wrong what he don't know. In that hedge, God had protected him. Now that the hedge has been trimmed, now that entrance has been getting in for the devil, Job is going to learn a lot now. And he's going to be learning a lot more than we've been in that hedge, and we call that today your comfort zone. And when you got yourself in a comfort zone, you're going to miss a lot of life opportunities. When you pad and cuddle your children in a comfort zone, they're going to miss a whole bunch of life and life lessons. We've got to learn from our mistakes. We've got to learn by the failures as well as the success. And Job does not know that, that he had been in the hedge and God has given him great light. And he's going to get more light now that the hedge has been removed, taken away, or opened. For my sighing huh, cometh before I eat. Why? He's all covered with sores. Here, Job, have something to eat. Oh, it's going to hurt. I'm going to get some of this goo on that food. Can't handle the utensils. Huh. You've been in so much pain you can't eat. There's no pleasure in eating. You don't want. You don't really want to eat, but you know you should. That's where Job is. And somebody is suffering a lot of pain. Get them in the book of Job. And my roarings. Ah! It's okay to go. Ah! Okay, Job did it. Are poured out like the waters. <laughs> Flow right out. He's letting it come out of his mouth. What he's saying is, I'm just, just, it's flowing out of me right now. Don't stop me. Now here's troubling verse 25. For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. Now what is that? The death of his children, the loss of income, the loss of finances, his own personal health. Now, who did that to him? The devil. Do you know the devil knows what you fear? And the devil may use that, if God allows, as a tool to take you down. Now, I've got fears in my own life, and I pray to the Lord, say, Lord God, please let me not ever be in that circumstance. The devil heard me. And the devil may say one day, well, Lord, let's... Let's do that and see how well he loves you. So you got to put your trust in all your all in God and not what you fear. The devil knows. And that which I was afraid, watch, what I'm afraid of is come unto me. The pain and loss. That's exactly what Job felt. That's what he did not want. That's what he tried to avoid. And the devil came and said, that's how I'm going to attack him. That may be one of the tactics that the devil uses on you. I mean, the devil is not going to use a can of beer for somebody who doesn't like alcohol. That alcohol is, is you know, I'm not going to put it to my lips. I don't care to have it. It's rotten. It stinks. And the devil's not going to use that. And one of his tactics may be, all right, I'll get him with fear. Fear is almost worse as in pain and sorrow because fear will make you do things that you don't want to do and it will make you not do things that you should do because you fear. Two tools that Satan has is this absolute I don't want to say destruction because people have gotten victory, but just an absolute for the Christian is pain and suffering and fear. Now, I've dealt with men like that in the prison multiple cases. And you can get victory over it. You've got to put your trust in God and in His Word and in prayer. 
And you got to believe God's going to hear your prayers. I was not in safety. No, not with the devil hanging around. And when God started the conversation, remember, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet. Yet, trouble came. I was living my life just normal. I would rebu rebuke my neighbor because his dog came over my yard. Pooped in my yard. Yeah, keep that dog over here. Uh, and I know then, but you know, he went, he went to the grocery store and the, the price was a dollar more than it was marked. Uh, Got to fix that. I was just living my life like I'm supposed to. You know, rebuking my children for something they've done. I'm doing right, is what he's saying. And look, what did I get? I got trouble. That came from the devil. And the evil part of God to Job is, we'll learn later on, Lord willing, when we get to the book of Job, is, Job, you've sinned. You are self-righteous. And what God has done to the devil is try to get Job to repent of his sins and be right. The devil's motive and purpose, destroy him, destroy him, destroy him, destroy him more. So God used the devil to, and for the greatness of Job that he got right. Job said, hey, I'm, I'm doing life just great. I got trouble. You're a Christian, you're doing life just great, you're going to get in trouble. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus, you're going to live your life like the Bible tells you to live. You're going to try to, to be pleasant in, in God's way. You're going to try to do what God tells you to do. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to stand more persecution by doing right than just doing the normal. And when you do, I'm a Christian, I'm happy where I am, I'm just going to live life like I'm going to live life, and I'm not going to do any of them Christian things, you're still going to get trouble. But you won't get no rewards for your trouble. 